nächstes haben wir wieder ein moderiertes Gespräch äh, zwischen Christian Kopp von Berlin Postkolonial und Paul Thomas, einem Nama-Aktivisten, der gerade aus äh, Namibia hier ist und sich freundlicherweise bereit erklärt hat, äh, hier auf das äh, Umbenennungsfest zu kommen. Äh, Christian wird ihn gleich nochmal ausführlicher vorstellen. Ähm, genau, dann kommt ihr ein bisschen nach vorne. Thank you very much. We have to switch to English uh, as, as many languages, but not German as far as I know, or just a little. Um, it is a great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Paul Thomas. Um, as um, was already mentioned, he's a NAMA activist, but he's even more than this. I can be more specific. He's a secretary of the NAMA Genocide Technical Committee. Uh, we are in close relation with the committee for, for many years now, since uh, the first return of human remains from Berlin to Namibia in 2011. Uh, and Paul is also a member of the Landless People's Movement, and we will come to this later on, to their agenda and issues. Um, but first, I would like to thank you very much uh, for being with us today. He hasn't come um, for this event only, but he will stay for two months, as far as I know. Uh, and he will be in Leipzig doing seminars and then back to Berlin. Um, so if uh, there are initiatives or groups who are interested in, in, in talking to a NAMA activist here, you are invited to invite him as well. He might have some time in his schedule. Um, but um, let's start um, our conversation. Um, maybe we should explain why we thought it would be interesting to have Paul here on the panel as well. Uh, as we today, we are not uh, focusing so much on the genocide issue, but we will talk about this. Um, but there is a relation, of course, to the broader issue of commemoration culture in Germany and in, in Namibia. Uh, I had the privilege to travel to Namibia uh, some months ago with my colleague Unyaka Sururumboro and we were kind of shocked and stunned by the, the number of German street names still glorifying uh, perpetrators, German colonialists, the number of monuments in every town you find something uh, still glorifying German colonialism. And as far as I know, there are some initiatives trying to change this as well. And this might be the connection to our issue here, to a new street name here in the M Street. So I would like to ask you, Paul, um, how can you uh, explain this, uh, that there are still so many uh, monuments not tackled uh, uh, or not um, talked about maybe or not taken away and why there are so many street names and are there any initiatives of your uh, of the namas for instance to change this i remember the uh, there was a debate on the bismarck street in 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 Windhoek, uh, and there is uh, an issue in uh, another uh, thing would be the big marine doc, uh, monument in Swakopmund, which was criticized very much by the activists. Maybe you can tell us a little more about this, how it goes in Namibia. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Um, thank you, um, uh, Christian, uh, for the uh, introduction. Um, yes, uh, the, recently there was, a, there was some politics around the renaming of the Bismarckstrasse, as you might have followed the news uh, papers and so on, uh, where <coughs> one certain um, uh, German Namibian, uh, German-speaking Namibian, came into defense of the renaming of the street street from Bismarckstrasse to one of the Namibian liberation uh, icons. Uh, his justification was uh, that uh, what is it that it might cost uh, it will be costly to costly to the to the uh, business uh, owners and 
it might also harm the tourism sector and so on, which uh, to our opinion is uh, uh, totally baseless. Uh, yes, there are initiatives uh, from both the Nama community and the Herero community, uh, both in Windhoek and all the other towns where we have uh, approached the local authorities, the municipalities who are now who are by law tasked with the re renaming and so on. We have proposed a number of uh, names uh, and number of streets that needs to be renamed uh, from the past colonial um, era as our objective to decolonize the, some of the cities that still uh, until uh, today uh, bear some of the uh, names that have connection to the to the uh, to the uh, horrible history of uh, the genocide so for instance um, in, in, in Kitmans, uh, the Nama Genocide Technical Committee has proposed um, that uh, uh, the Kaiser, Kaiser, what is it, there is a Kaiser River that uh, uh, name board needs to be changed and these are some of the uh, things that are in process. Um, my question would be, do, do you have the feeling that the Namibian government is, is interested in in, in, in dealing with the issue, uh, especially what, if it concerns uh, the memory or commemoration of the genocide against the Nama and Tehredo? Uh, no, totally no, because uh, there is absolutely no political will from the current government. Um, and one can see it from uh, many, many instances. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the, the land question uh, has not been uh, tackled enough by the current uh, Namibian government, so there is totally no no political no political will from the from the Namibian government in terms of dealing with the with the with the colonial history and uh, 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 what of uh, as to what happened in the past. Um, you have mentioned uh, the land question, and I know there was a, a second land reform conference, I think it was last year, Yes. Uh, organized by the government, uh, and there is a committee traveling around asking people about their positions concerning the land issue. Could you maybe explain to um, all of us a little more about what is behind this, what is meant by the land question. What is the problem of the land? Yes, uh, to put the land question in, in context, uh, let me start from the, from the historical perspective. Um, until today, 80% of the land still belongs to the, to the white communities, the German community and, the, and then the Afrikaner. Um, and as a matter of this, the, the communities decided to to take up the uh, restoration issue, which is totally connected to re redistribution of land. And prior to the to the land conference. Uh, the affected communities, both the Nama Herero and also the Damaras and so on, have made the submissions. But what we have demanded prior to the land conference was not entertained uh, by the government. So these communities um, have boycotted uh, the, 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 the land conference because what we wanted to see being discussed in the land conference was totally um, not part of the of the of the land program uh, land conference program so we we boycotted the land conference and um, as you uh, alluded to there is a ancestral land commission which is going around the country um, 
taking some oral history and written uh, history and submissions from those communities that have specifically been lent as possessed. And um, it's very clear that uh, from from the from from the look of things that uh, the land conference is actually just a election gimmick for the for the for the current uh, government to keep the status quo without really addressing the the land question and the redistribution of 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 the land uh, why i'm saying this is that uh, even the president uh, have recently while while he have uh, established the ancestral land commission make certain public statements uh, about uh, regarding the the restitution and he said that uh, there will unfortunately there will be there will be no restitution so one can already by drawing from those statements one can already uh, draw the conclusion that uh, there will not, nothing will. There will be no uh, positive results uh, from this uh, ancestral land commission. So it it just already puts us back to the way we have where we have been already. So so that's what I can say uh, uh, in regards to the land question. Um, I find this uh, question about the land so. Um, very interesting as we observe that in the German discussion, in the newspapers, in the media, this question of, of the expropriation of land uh, from the, in this almost total expropriation after the genocide is hardly tackled at all and hardly spoken about. So if we have in the media discussions, it is sometimes about the, it is about the genocide, but not about this ongoing uh, landlessness of, of the Nama and Terero still not uh, uh, still living beside you know their own traditional lands and areas uh, so it, it might be an, an aim or a task for us I guess uh, to make it more conscious to the German public as well that this is not only something about the past when we talk about the genocide and debate about it, but very much uh, connected to the to, to, to the present, and you you can hardly see it uh, more clearly than in this land issue. But uh, I would like to ask you as well about your opinion concerning the negotiations going on between the German and the Namibian government, uh, which is a negotiation going on for is it five years now? Um, concerning the genocide and what you think about your own position concerning these negotiations uh, and maybe even a little bit uh, um, maybe you can add something as well uh, about um, the direct result of this uh, negotiations which I would interpret as what I would in interpret the, the, the uh, law case in New York you, you've started uh, together with the Overhead Maybe you can say something to this? Yes, yes. Uh, before I get there, yeah, no, it's true, um, uh, Christian, that the, uh, the land question is, or the genocide is being discussed in isolation from the land question. Um, we, the, the consciousness of on the land question is not brought that much to the surface and uh, most of the time we only talk about the genocide both maybe also here in Germany and back in, in Namibia uh, forgetting that the, uh, the genocide is the result of the land question so <clears throat> it's uh, I mean until today uh, you can still feel the the, 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 the landlessness, the generational poverty as to what is being caused by being, being landless. So these are the two things that the government also strategically, maybe, uh, try to avoid. On the other hand, they want to negotiate on behalf of these two communities um, without them, about them. But um, talking about 
the, the genocide on the other hand, but they're not wanting to talk on the issue of the land, land and giving back land to the to the communities. And on the issue of expropriation, uh, I mean, it's a, uh, not in the context of the South African, not in the South African context, but uh, I mean, we have legislations, we have uh, the law that guides us, we have the constitution, the Namibian constitution, and expropriation of land is, is provided for in the, in, in the, in the constitution, uh, as long as it's been done in the legal framework of, of, of which, which is guiding, which is the guiding principle of, of, of our democracy. So, yes, uh, regarding the, regarding the, 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 the genocide and then the negotiations, uh, it was, we were fortunate to have a meeting after our last meeting we had with the ambassador uh, when uh, Poland's, Mr. Poland's the special envoy visited uh, Namibia. At that meeting, um, we had a terrible, <laughs> Uh, uh, our meeting ended in a very terrible way, where uh, the special envoy made some remarks, some comparisons to the to the to the Jewish Holocaust and then to the uh, genocide, uh, which he clearly said said in his uh, in his statement that there is no way that we can uh, compare the Namibian ge genocide to the uh, Jewish Holocaust and uh, it, it was a it was a it was a it was a yell in the in the room to to say it and from from that from that meeting I'm just trying to give uh, the the background from that meeting uh, we we had a, a this uh, discomfort uh, relationship with the ambassador, but we were fortunate to, before he was leaving uh, Namibia, uh, his term got, uh, get, uh, came to, to, to end, I think, in July. So we had a good meeting uh, with the ambassador. <laughs> Not such a good meeting, but at some points we were able to, to agree, which he also said that I hope you guys don't go and quote me in the, in the Namibian news, in the newspapers, where he said that, um, Paul, um, uh, there are some stuff that, you know, we are not comfortable, but that's what we. That's not what we can say as the German government. We, we Namibia is a foreign, is is a, is, a, is a sovereign state, so we cannot dictate to the Namibian government whether you need you needed to be for the, for them to include you in the negotiations. But that's for you to demand from your from your government. But we are very reluctant to conclude the. And I'm saying this deliberately. Uh, he said that we are ready to conclude the, the negotiations, but we are also, on the other hand, reluctant because we are not sure what will be the outcome of the court case. We might end up pay, paying twice the, to the to the. To, to, to the Namibians, giving money to the government, and then if the outcome is otherwise from the appeal, we might we will be end, end up paying then money, I mean, giving reparations directly then to the to these two communities. That's why we are very reluctant on the issue of concluding these uh, negotiations. Um, thanks. Um, I would put my last question to you, uh, which would be, as I know there are many activists here uh, who try their best uh, to support your cause in, in Germany, maybe you have some more specific wishes in, in what area they could uh, possibly support you, um, what would be uh, and issues issues they should tackle and address here in Germany. Uh, is it the land thing? Is it 
what what would you wish from from German activists to 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 bring forth? Yes, uh, thank you very much on that for that question. Um, I mean, until I have been coming here, this is my third time that I came to Berlin and to Germany uh, to attend such events and. Uh, We had our first congress in 2016, I think, and then we had the one last year in Hamburg, uh, and we had one now in 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 Windhoek, uh, and one can see, you know, the, the the growing number. I mean, from making looking at the two uh, congress we had in 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 Germany, I could really see the the the, the growing number and the solidarity. So. Uh, I'm, I want to express my, my sincere appreciation uh, uh, for, for, for the support of the civil society and the, and the local German uh, uh, people here in, in Germany. Yes, uh, what are the issues that need to be brought up is the, I mean, there has been some sort of um, consciousness to build around the genocide, but the question is the the, 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 land, the land question because many at times as I have alluded earlier on to many of the times uh, the the genocide is being discussed in isolation to 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 the to the land question and uh, you have been part of the you had you attended the the symposium um, and it was also interesting to see that Uh, absolutely, the uh, not all of the Namibian German uh, German-speaking Namibians are rejecting the the, the the topic of of genocide. Some of the very influence and influencing people are also uh, willing to discuss the, the question of genocide. Uh, at this time, I don't want to mention some names, but. Uh, Uh, there are people who are really willing to uh, to, to 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 support and, and and to to assist and willing to have an open discussion about uh, uh, regarding the the genocide. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul, for being with us. Uh, I think we have to stop and carry on our conversation. Uh, okay. Over there. okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.